Hey, uh, I'm Lisa Redburn. This is Ginger Snap, a conversation and a cookie with a creative Mainer. Um, I am here in Harpswell with my new neighbor, Jimmy Cornish. Jim Cornish, maybe some of you know him as Jim. Um, and it's episode 61, and we're sitting by this fireplace in the house that Jim built at Stone Soup Institute here in Hartswell. And, um, hi Jim. Hi Lisa. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Welcome I, to Hartswell. Thank you very much. I've already had some of his homemade elderberry wine. Oh yeah. Mm, it's good. You'll have to call him up and get some. <laughs> yeah, we do workshops on that. <laughs> okay, so Jim has been teaching, um, homesteading and the arts of homesteading and animal husbandry and and organic gardening and everything else for a long time and you built this house you came here in 1975 and built this house and I'm gonna let you talk about yourself now yep 19 1975 <laughs> when I got out of the Navy came back home the uh, you know you you ask most people when did they come to Maine right the easier question for me would be when did I leave <laughs> Okay. I left in 1973 and came back in 1975. And that's it, right? That's it. My <laughs> my uh, on my father's side of the family, they've been they were living in Harpswell in 1758. Wow. And uh, my mother's side of the family, they came to Brunswick in 1912. Came mm -hmm. to Quebec in 1812 and into Brunswick in 1912. So they've been around a while. You're the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> And I was I was raised on my grandfather's farm over in yeah. Bowden uh, till I was mm, let me see we moved off the farm when I was thirteen yeah. went in the navy when I was seventeen but worked on the farm between when I was thirteen and seventeen mm -hmm. and when I left the farm it was like in a cloud of dust it was like get me out of here <laughs> I, I don't want to ever milk another cow in my life huh. and uh, I, I wanted nothing to do with it. But three years away changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and I came home and planted a garden immediately when I got here in, in June of 75 and have never quit. Wow. And I, I bought my first horse when I was 20 and wow. still have draft horses. I've been at it for a little over 40 years, mm -hmm. logging and farming with them. It's a, it's wow. a load of fun. <laughs> Where do you keep the horses? In, uh, I have a little barn over here. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't get that far. And, and, the, uh, and I've got pastures down the road and different pastures mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. I own less than an acre of land here, mm -hmm. but at, at different points in my life, I have farmed around 60 acres wow. around town here that different mm -hmm. people have owned. This neighborhood was an old uh, farming neighborhood, mm -hmm. and uh, by the time I came in the 70s, everybody had pretty much given up farming, and oh. there was lots of pasture land and hayfield still mm. left around that was viable and they were happy to have happy to have you come in and yeah. <laughs> do something with it yeah wow that's great so how long have you had the the institute as in we started the institute i think it was in 2000 mm. is, is when it started and it was mm. a crazy thing i my, my neighbor rolf hamacher was a would come here in the summertime and he is a uh uh high school art teacher mm -hmm. in germany and uh and after he'd been coming three or four years, he brought a friend with him that was, uh, he's a cabinet maker in Berlin named Klaus mm -hmm. Fessler. And he uh, he buys and restores and sells Louis the Fifteenth and Sixteenth furniture. Mm -hmm. That's his whole shtick. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he always resisted coming to Maine because he hated Americans. Uh. He spent all of the 1970s protesting the Vietnam War in front mm. of the American embassy. And, and in his mind, all Americans were, mm. were you know, warmongers. And yeah. He just didn't want to associate with us. But Rolf coaxed him over here and, and uh, we became fast friends. Mm -hmm. He was uh, raised in a, in a cloistered monastery just outside of Berlin mm. from the time he was 16 till he was... 21 and he had not been around horses or logging or any of that sort wow. of thing since then so so we became fast friends mm -hmm. really quickly and a few days before he went back to germany he uh he told me that he had apprentices that come to his uh his shop two or three times a week and mm -hmm. uh, wanted to know where he could recommend for them to come to maine to learn to do what i do mm -hmm. and huh. i said well I don't know any place in America <laughs> that they could even do this. I've since found that there were several places, yep. but mm -hmm. at the time I didn't know that. Yeah. So he wanted to know if I would take some apprentices, and I told him not. 
that I've had apprentices before, and especially logging, it takes a whole year before mm -hmm. they can get to a place where you can trust them not to kill themselves with a chainsaw <laughs> or kill me or the horses. That's or, all you need on your shoulders. <laughs> or, or, or somebody else, you know. And, and by the time they get to a point where they can do me any good, they take off and go off on their own, you know. And yeah. so I said, no, I'm not interested. He said, well, what about if they paid you? And I said, well, if they want well, to pay me, on. yeah, I'll take eight or 10 <laughs> or 12. You know, I don't care. And that was when the EU was first being formed. Uh -huh. And he said that there was a pool of money to send students abroad to learn. Uh -huh. And I said, well, yeah. I huh. said, I, I'm, I'm interested. And so the conversation kind of got really cranking up. And it was midnight by then. And we'd consumed a lot of local <laughs> beer and decided we should go home. And come next morning... We were still pretty excited about it. We, this mm -hmm. care conversation went on for three days about if we were wow. going to start a school, what would we teach? Yep. How would we teach it? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and how would we we break it down? And who would we get to come in for adjunct teachers? And yeah. and uh, huh. and by the third day, it was pretty well solidified, except for an administrator. Uh oh! I said, "Who is going to be the administrator? <laughs> Not me." <laughs> Not Rolf, he can't administer from Germany, and Klaus doesn't even speak English, it can't be him. Mm -hmm. So so we were kind of stuck. Yeah. And then about three days later, my friend Sarah Stone was up from Massachusetts, she owned a farm a mile down the road here where I had already been farming, mm -hmm. and had my horses, and just conversationally she said, so, what's been going on in the last week? Mm -hmm. And so I told her about this conversation, and she started to laugh. She said, well, I am an administrator at UMass Medical Center, <laughs> and I have ovarian cancer, and I have quit my job, and I'm going to stay on the farm, and I'm going to heal from this cancer, oh my God. and I would love to be your administrator. Wow. So, well, like in five days, this whole thing just kind of oh gelled, gosh. and she started... Uh, developing a curriculum, developing a budget, uh, you know, got us an appointment with a lawyer to start a nonprofit incorporation. Wow. And she really, she really started mm. cranking on it. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't beat the cancer, mm. and she died five months later. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And uh, but she was the one that really got the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. She said her job at UMass was to harness dreams. Mm. And that's what she did for us. She threw a harness on the dream and began to give it shape. She gave it enough shape so that, so that uh, you know, another individual, Peg Newberg, was our next administrator, mm -hmm. Matt's mother. Oh, okay. And uh, and she, see, it is a small world. Oh my it? gosh, it is. If we keep Are you watch, listening, Matt? If 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 if, you, if you, we keep doing ginger snaps, we'll all be tied together before it's We're over. We're all going to be related before you know it. <laughs> And I noticed you interviewed Ted DeMille, yeah, another I guy Ted. I love. Oh, you know Ted? Hi, yeah. Ted! <laughs> yeah, we're so, going to play at Slate soon. Anyway, go nice. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. Pe Peg Newberg took it over and just kept building it from wow, there and, until so it, it got to be too wieldy for a retired teacher. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then we had another administrator after that and then an administrative assistant. And then I became the administrator by default. That's yeah. why things are so frigged up. If you oh go and try gosh. and find our website right now, it's not there. Because I did. I, I did try. I did something wrong, <laughs> and, and now we don't have a website. Oh, no. So I have to try and figure that out. Oh, oh my God. Okay, you got to sit up closer because okay. you're, you're leaving. I want you to be okay. in the light. Okay, yes. there. Okay. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I'm more well lit than you are, but anyway. Because you're my, more lit than I am. My... <laughs> it's not my... I'm used to the elderberry because I've had a little more of the elderberry <laughs> I'm more accustomed to it. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Do you know what your first word was? I do not. Uh, do you th what do you think it might have been? My guess? Yeah. No. <laughs> that's, that's what my guess would be because yeah. I don't like to be told what I cannot and what I can do. Okay. I like to figure it out for myself. Oh, that's good. All right. Well, my first word was cookie, so that's why we're having a cookie. This is the, these are the enormous snickerdoodles. From, I like to show them up really close. That Teresa made these at Vegetable Garden. Oh, Vegetable I, Corner. Corner. Why do I, I say that every time? Vegetable Garden. Vegetable Corner. Yeah. And I saw her this morning. I, I think, I don't know. I don't have a bite. These are good. Uh-huh. Mmm. They're chewy. 
I've never had anything there that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Have you had Ray's pastrami? Mm -mm. Oh my God. Mm -mm. Pastrami is the die for. No, but we've had the sausages. Mm. <laughs> the sausages are mm -hmm. right on. Yeah, no, they're very good. He makes a good Polish sausage for a Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so while we're eating the cookies, did you have a car that was really I bet you did have a car that was really cool when you were growing up. Oh, no? so many yes, of them. So many. Yeah. <laughs> So the the <laughs> first one I I remember was uh, that I was really fond of was a, a 1951 Studebaker. Wow! That, that, that my dad had in a '56 right, cool. Oldsmobile. He had, and I had lots of cool cars. My first one was a 1955 Studebaker, then a '55 Ford, 1966 wow. Chevy van, a '57 Chevy Ford hard top, a '62 Chevy Impala. I had wow! Lots, I Are bet, you listening, Peter Keith? <laughs> I bet lots of really cool cars. Wow! I can't compete with that. That's great. That's great. All right. I know you're a reader because we've talked about um, some books we love. Mm. So, is there a book or two that you love to recommend to people? Mm -hmm. The uh, probably the two that I've recommended the most is. Uh, the Education of Little Tree by Forrest Carter. It was a great book. It was one of those books that was lent to me. And uh, by the time I had finished with it and gave it back to the person that lent it to me, it, it felt like there was a, a hollow spot in my house and I had to buy one, even though I just finished it, just to have it on the shelf <laughs> and lend it to people. And, uh, and I've given away lots of them at Christmas time and, mm. and birthday presents and that sort of thing. And that was a that was a great book mm. for me. And uh, Sherry Winston's uh, Women's Anatomy of Arousal is a is a great book that I've recommended to a lot of people. Okay. And uh, but any any I've got a whole shelf full of Wendell Berry mm -hmm. over there. That's anything by Wendell Berry. The Unsettling of America. Mm. It's about the decline in agriculture from right after World War II until the 1980s. Mm -hmm. You know, in 1948, 32% of the population of this country still lived on farms. Isn't that incredible? And by 1988, we were down to 3%. Mm. Huge loss. That is a huge loss. That seemed crazy. And the, the, the knowledge, I mean, thousands of years of agricultural evolution disappeared in mm -hmm. 40 years. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was horrible. And people have, you know, I'm happy the way things have kind of evolved. A lot of those things mm -hmm. have been picked up and built upon and and, yeah. uh, and and new things have been incorporated into it until mm -hmm. we've got a really strong agricultural, you know, backbone going on here. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of young, new, like young farmers, I feel like now. In their 20s, coming back to Maine. My friend Lynn Miller is the editor of the Small Farmer's Journal. It's a mm -hmm. quarterly magazine printed in Oregon, Sisters, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been all around the world looking at, at uh, agricultural systems. And he told me that Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, upstate New York, and western Massachusetts as an area has it going on more than any place he's ever been. That's great. That's as, so cool. As, as far as... as Farm to table, mm -hmm. farm to school, mm -hmm. uh, food hubs, mm -hmm. CSAs. There is there is a more of a density in this area yeah. than there That's is great. any place that he's been. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's really encouraging. It is. All right, Jim. Let's talk about music. Music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there an album or two that you've come back to again and again in your life? You know, it, it's not really an album. It, it's a uh, it, it's a uh, a documentary film hmm. called The Last Waltz. Oh, well, yeah, that's the, a good one if you haven't seen it. The Last Waltz <laughs> always brings me home. I mean, it's it's the band. Yeah, Robbie Robertson and Levon Helm and arguably the best band it, ever. Yeah, I mean, and then and then they they, they bring in Van Morrison, mm -hmm. Bob Dylan, uh, mm -hmm. Neil Young, Neil mm -hmm. Diamond. Joni Mitchell. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody yeah. is there. I mean, it's it's a true celebration mm -hmm. of music mm -hmm. that really brings me home. Mm. I love that one. 
but that's that's where I generally tend to run to is is Neil Young, mm -hmm. Van Morrison, Into the Mystic. Mm -hmm. Van Morrison mm -hmm. takes me to the heart every time. Mm -hmm. I love that song. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, Jim. What's the next question? Cornish. If a movie was made about your life, <laughs> you're still not in the light enough. How okay. did that happen? I, I keep I keep going like this and like this. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> if a movie was made about your life, what genre would it be? And who would star as you? I know who I think would star as you, but I'm going to let you answer first. No, I'm going to ask you first because I asked three different people and we all came up with the same oh, I person know all almost of them. immediately. <laughs> same person. I thought Jeff Bridges. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you know what the other three were? What? Sam Elliott. Ooh, oh, that's even better. That's even better. <laughs> Sam we'll Elliott. Go with Sam Elliott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted, I wanted I some, I wanted somehow to do Robert Duvall because he's my hero. I love Robert Duvall. But he's too old to be. And me. he doesn't look good in a beard. No. And he doesn't have enough hair, <laughs> even if he puts on a wig. If he wore my straw hat, we might get away with it. <laughs> but he always likes to come on with that Southern. Nobody is going to be able to talk like me. And don't even try. I know. I've never even heard an accent that sounds like Jimmy's. I mean, I've heard a lot of Maine accents. But yours is, the night you came to our house, I just stood there transfixed. Like, what is it? It's a combination of like three different regions or something. I, well, it's just your own unique version. And I, I hate it when people try and get on TV or the and movies and try accent. and fake a Maine accent. It is so horrible. They always sound like they're from Boston. I anyway. know. Uh, uh, yeah. Trying to Doesn't speak work. Maine accent with, you know, their back up too straight or something. Oh, it's awful. You know, the, one of the worst ones, I shouldn't say this, but when they did the, um, I used to, when I was a kid, go to Rockport to feed Andre the Seal, right? And they did this movie about Andre the Seal. And whoever, now I can't think who it was. One of, I want to say it was one of the Carradine brothers. And I like them, but one of them was trying to do a main axe. Mm -mm. No, didn't. <laughs> I, I saw a little <laughs> tiny spot of a film. One of Ruth Moore's books was called The Spoon Handle. And oh, that's a nice title. And they actually made a movie about mm -hmm. it back in the 1950s. And here's this huh. guy out, out on his lobster boat with his leather flight jacket and his le le like motorcycle cap and shit on him. Come on. And he's trying to have a, <laughs> his khakis and he's trying to have a main accent. Which is horrible. Horribly stupid. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So sadly, we've come to the end of this ginger snap. Um, I, th thank you for watching. If you did watch, um, I'm Lisa Redfern. If you want to know about me or my music, you can go to lisaredfern.com. I've got a few gigs, uh, coming up in the next month or so. And, um, how do you get, if someone wants to reach you, cause somebody is like, I gotta go work with Jim. What's the best way to, way to reach you? Oh, <clears throat> Right now, not the Stone Soup Institute because <laughs> it's not me. online. I have to figure that one out. But sooner or later, you okay. can go there. Keep mm -hmm. trying that. Stone Soup Institute, Maine. If you Google that, you'll get to us. Uh, but Maddie is our administrative assistant right Hi, now. And, she, and she's maintaining a, uh, a Facebook page. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you, go to, uh, if you go on Facebook and look for Stone Soup Institute, mm -hmm. I think that's how you do it. Okay. I don't do Facebook, so I don't. <laughs> but and if you'd like some of um Jimmy's elderberry wine, you know, maybe just give him a call. And... We do we do workshops. <laughs> uh we're going to start probably in a month. We'll be advertising on Facebook to do uh dandelion wine oh. workshops and then we keep working our way up from dandelions and and we'll go to rhubarb. We'll be Oh, I love rhubarb. You make rhubarb wine? Rhubarb wine mm -hmm. and strawberry wine and mm -hmm. then we blend the strawberry and rhubarb together. Oh, strawberry and rhubarb my gosh. And we blend apple and elderberry together. Mm, strawberry rhubarb, that must strawberry be really good. Rhubarb That's my favorite pie, yes. other yeah. than blueberry. Yeah. Well, they're on like, they're in like neck and neck, blueberry and strawberry. We make blueberry wine. All right, well, here, cheers. Here's to my new home in Hartswell and to talking Jimmy into doing a ginger snap. And thank you. This was episode 61 of Ginger Snap. Oh, I gotta get my sign. Oh, and the cookies, once again, were from the Vegetable Corner. Corner. And if you want homemade cookies, I think she makes them. It, every day. Every day. Okay, thanks a lot. This has been Ginger Snack.